This past weekend's Modern Grand Prix brought us a lot of interesting tech to look at, but one deck in particular grabbed my attention and never let go. Control decks in this format have been hit a million times by bans, changing metagames, and honestly haven't performed up to par in the last five years, especially since Splinter Twin got banned. But the Esper Control list we're looking at today, created by Genta Sakamoto, this thing is straight up hilarious. So sit back and relax as I tech for you Esper Control slash midrange slash I don't even know. If you end up enjoying the video, be sure to hit that like button, it helps out a lot, let's do this thing. Instead of starting with a single type of card, we'll begin with what the deck wants to do through each stage of the game. That'll help explain what we're working with. The deck runs three Thoughtseize, two Inquisition of Kozilek, and one Collective Brutality to start. The split between Thoughtseize and Inquisition is entirely dependent on the modern metagame at the time of the tournament, and the shift back to Thoughtseize is in response to larger spells coming back to the forefront. From Titan Shift to Tron Strategies to other control decks to White Red Prison, a full playset of Inquisition just doesn't do the job anymore. Regardless, five discard spells start us off. Hand Attack is important and we have that covered. Now Collective Brutality specifically brings a lot of versatility. Two mana to force a spell discard is nice, but getting to discard a card to wreck a creature, now that's attractive. There's only one in the deck, but in testing it performed admirably. It's very good, we'll come back to it later. Esper control decks need two things, hand attack and removal. Say hello to our removal suite, Path to Exile, Fatal Push, and Murderous Cut. Path to Exile is an obvious playset ought to include, instant speed, unconditional, we all know it's amazing. Now Fatal Push has been replacing Murderous Cut in a lot of a list, but both of them have their uses, especially in a deck like Esper Control. You saw it with Collective Brutality, we're going to be discarding cards. Murderous Cut becomes strong once that starts. Fatal Push is great to stem early attacks, especially from the likes of Death Shadow, but Murderous Cut is there as an insurance policy against those giant creatures the push can't bully around. Much like our discard spells, our removal has a nice variety to hit anything we need. So now that we have our disruption and removal, let's get into the meat of the deck, a place of Jace Vern's Prodigy lead the way. We've seen this card in action for years now and it never disappoints. Looting is a powerful effect, it fills our graveyard with cards we don't need, and it fuels our murderous cut. Being able to go through your deck quickly is something all control decks want to do, Jace does it pretty well. And once he transforms, which won't take but a moment, his minus three is absurd. You fill your yard with spells you've already cast, and ones you can't cast just yet. Then flash them back with Jace, classic synergy just as powerful as ever. Now if you're going to be spell slinging like crazy with all your discard spells, removal and whatnot, you're going to need some payoff. Say hello to a full playset of Monastery Mentor. Oh yeah, we're going deep. Monastery Mentor, a vintage powerhouse, is finally making its way to modern in larger numbers. Most of what we looked at so far are non-creature spells, so you're getting one ones with prowess all day. Jace is going to flash back even more of them, so that's more tokens and more prowess. The key to playing creatures in control decks is that you have to play the creatures that you can get the most mileage out of, because your space for creatures in this deck? Very limited. Monastery Mentor is going to run miles around any opponent who can't get rid of it right away. Those 1-1 one -one tokens with prowess, nothing to laugh at. Now, if only there were another use for these 1-1 one -one monk tokens. Smuggler's Copter is in this deck, three of them, no I'm not joking. The Copter, after having been humiliated by the standard ban announcement, made its way to modern and is now wreaking havoc. This is what separates a good deck from a great deck, this card right here. I can't even explain how hilarious it is that the Mentor tokens crew the Copter. Then when it attacks or blocks, you get to loot. In this deck, more loot effects are always good. Smuggler's Copter provides some serious pressure on board that your opponent is definitely not going to expect out of you. It fuels your delve, gets you through your deck faster, a hilarious and effective inclusion, especially when paired with Monastery Mentor. Playing them together, trust me, it's amazing. It's totally worth building the whole deck just for that. It would be pretty loose if the only way to turn on Smuggler's Copter was Monastery Mentor, right? That'd be crazy. Good thing the deck includes a playset of Lingering Souls. For your vehicle needs available 24-7, Lingering Souls always has your back. We're going to have Monks driving this thing, Ghosts driving it, everyone gets to drive the Copter. Again, supremely powerful having this many creatures that can crew the Copter. The fact that it's Crew 1 really brings the entire plan together. And Lingering Souls is versatile as all heck. You can loot it away and cast it from your yard if you absolutely have to. If you can avoid that, it doubles the 1-1s one -ones that aren't easily removed by a number of strategies in the format. The creatures you play, pains in the butt. You see this coming together now, right? It's a total nightmare. 
We're going to keep the pain train going with Tassiger. The guy just makes sense. We're looking to loot a lot of cards. Our graveyard is going to be full all the time, and that benefits Tassiger in multiple ways. First, it helps us delve him out early and often. That's a given, but also it gives his ability more selective targets. If you delve him onto the battlefield, you can get rid of the chaff that you needed to loot before and force your opponent to give you something good when you activate the ability. He lands, you get even more card advantage from the card itself, and he's a 4-5 to boot. Remember when we spoke about creature quality? Tassiger easily makes the cut, but he is relatively high maintenance, so the deck only runs two copies, but that's enough. If he doesn't die, that ability takes over the game so quickly it's delicious. Next up to Gideon Ally of Zendikar. I know Standard just doesn't have enough room for this guy anymore. He had to make his way into modern and he performs valiantly. The key to Planeswalkers and control decks that don't generally have card advantage, they have to generate board advantage, and that's exactly what Gideon does. Creating two twos is another way to turn our copter on, and as plus one is what you do when your opponent is out of options and you're ready to beat down with a giant five five. Gideon is in this deck for the long haul. This isn't the top end of some aggro strategy. Gideon is there to pressure the opponent with constant creature production until they have nothing left. He isn't the best card in the deck, but he is more than adequate. Along the same line, Soren's Solemn Visitor has earned himself a couple spots in the deck. Copy-paste everything from Gideon to Soren and you get the gist, except for one thing. Soren's tokens come with flying, which means they are true menaces of their own, and his plus one grants everything a power boost and lifelink, so you can see why there's a split between these two walkers. Lifelink is a control deck's best friend. Dropping Soren on a board with Monastery Mentor and heaven forbid a few monk tokens? That's a lot of prowess. Then you add on the Soren buff and lifelink, you can get a 10 point life swing easy, maybe even higher. In games where your life total is under constant assault, Soren is going to do a lot of work for you. All that leaves is Thought Scout, or a full playset. This thing does everything you could want it to do. It's cheap, instant speed, it fills your graveyard with Del fodder, Jace fodder, Tassiger fodder, you get the picture, and it draws you a card. It's like Thought Scour was made for this deck, and with that, we round out our non-lands. Let's talk mana. The deck runs 21 lands in total, a less than average amount, but the cost of most of the deck is pretty low, and Delve helps out a lot. Polluted Delta and Flooded Strand are the only land playsets. They work really well with Fatal Push, and they fill your graveyard for Delve. All around great. They can search for your Hallowed Fountain, Godless Shrine, Watery Grave, and Prairie Stream. One copy of each of them. Basically like a land toolbox for your fetch lands. Three Concealed Courtyard, hopefully for the early game since a lot of what you're doing in the opening turns is hand disruption and removal. Mainly black and white spells. Then one Vault of the Archangel for Sweet Creature Tech. Despite this being a control deck, there are a fair amount of creatures in it, and Vault makes sense. In testing, I only used it a few times, but when I did, Monks with Prowess, they gain you a lot of life. Round all of that out with one Ghost Quarter and four assorted basic lands, and you have the 21 land mana base. This version of Esper Control functions pretty similar to most versions of Control. You have your Disruption and Removal to get you through the first few turns of the game. Then you step on the gas with value-ridden creatures and creature-producing spells. Now remember, you aren't running counter spells, so you have to be proactive with your control. Use your Disruption early and often, get your Lingering Souls onto the battlefield, Jace onto the battlefield. You have to make proactive steps or you will fall behind. Since your removal is so cheap, you won't have to hold up much mana to respond to things, so drop your Copter when you can, even if you can't activate it yet. Drop Mentor when you can, drop your creatures whenever you can, because it isn't like you can protect them anyways. Use Disruption ahead of time, see if the path is clear, forehead to table and just do it. Proactive control. Sounds oxymoronic, but it is not. The sideboard of the deck is a beautiful array of anti-everything cards. Normally I would tell you to make your own sideboard and give you a few suggestions, but I just love this one straight to death. It has Rest in Peace, Nile Spellbomb, and Relic of Progenitus for Graveyard Shenanigans, Ceremonious Rejection for anything Eldrazi, Tron, Ban, or otherwise, Supreme Verdict for Creature-Based decks, Disdainful Stroke for Big Control decks, Tron, Scapeshift even, Lost Legacy for any combo deck ever, and Disenchant because Affinity sucks, Bogles sucks, Anti-Control Artifact tech sucks, I just adore this sideboard to bits. It's fantastic, like 10 out of 10. So what do you think about this iteration of Esper Control? Is this something that you would consider playing? Personally, the mix between pure control and mid-range is something I really enjoy. Without counters, I didn't think I would like it that much, but oh man, was I wrong about that. Being able to crew a Smuggler's Copter in a control deck, that's just value. So again, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, please leave them below and we'll talk about it. I've been playing with the deck for a little bit and have some notes, so if you have any questions, ask away. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. I think this deck is pretty rad, and a lot of it is expensive as expected, but some parts are not, at least not yet. 
Soren Solemn Visitor is one of my favorite cards in the entire deck, and it's only $3.75. Yeah, not joking. Didn't think it was that low, right? Well, it absolutely is, and it's wonderful. So if you want copies, you should grab them up right now. Super cheap and powerful. Click the link on the screen. Helps the channel we all win. Enjoy.